The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan, and I'll be your host for today. And joining me from the wonderful country of Ethiopia is my good friend, Hiskaius. Hiskaius, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Brother Nathan. Thank you, sir. Um, For those of you who are avid listeners to this podcast, you will remember around a year ago, um, Hiskaius and I published a podcast about our time together in Ethiopia. Um, Now that it's about one year later, uh, just over one year later, I wanted to get on with his Caius one more time and just get an update on everything that God is doing. And I think you guys are going to be really excited to hear um, all of the stories and testimonies that his Caius has to share. So um, without any further ado, his Caius, uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been seeing God do over the course of the last year in Ethiopia through the laborership movement. Yeah, thank God, because... You know, it was new strategy. It was a new way of, you know, making evangelism because we, before I take this training in Ethiopia with Brother Nathan, you know, we just use evangelism with especially pastors, evangelists, and something like that. But after taking this leadership training, we made each and all, everybody, those who love God and those who love others, the believers whose heart is full of, you know, the love of God and the love of others, everybody, you know, uh, participated in this work and we trained, you know, many lovers. And now the work is beyond, beyond control. We train it, some groups of, you know, young people, those who are lovers, then those who train again train others so you know the the people who come who come to christ is beyond our expectation so i'm very happy to take that training on last year october with nathan and now the work is expanding expanding so largely well i'm very happy and uh like you guys heard his kaya say um up until this point, at least in his Caius's network of believers there in Ethiopia, um, they were primarily training leaders, uh, people who are gifted evangelists, teachers, shepherds, um, the the pastors. Um, and then just in this last year, they focused on equipping everybody, um, including ordinary people. Um, and like you heard him say, it's been incredible. <laughs> I love what you said, Hiskaius, that it's out of control. <laughs> Praise God. That, that's incredible. Um, there's a couple of different things I want to, I, I think everybody would love to hear. First, um, if you have any stories of particular people um, who got, received the training and shared with others, maybe they have a testimony or something, um, or... Yeah. If you have any testimonies of the people who receive the gospel from those people, uh, I think those would be encouraging for everybody to hear. You know, in a place called Jinka, it is very south of Ethiopia. Maybe it can be 100 kilometers to South Sudan. And we invited one person who is working in factory, but he's, you know, he's not paid person. He's just, you know, private who factory worker, and I invited that person to Sodo to come to get the training with Nathan. And after he took, after he, he took that training and went back to the place and they started the training, you know, in that place alone, after taking this leadership training, they established a church and another church. And even I visited twice that place and before he takes the training, the number of congregation is below 150. But after, you know, after, you know, I visit that place, by this time, the, the number of congregation is over 800. 
So another church they planted, and that church is also growing very fast. And as you know, I discussed with them, don't wait and go fast, go fast, you know, that kind of training. Everybody, you know, the, the factory workers, they are lovers. They are, you know, they are sharing good news to others. And the teachers, they are lovers. And, the, you know, the clinical, the hospital workers, they are lovers. And the business people who are working, you know, merchandises, they are lovers. So before that, we just only rely on pastors and evangelists. But by this time, everybody became lovers, lovers of the kingdom. Hey. So that is beyond our control. I'm very happy for that. Wow, incredible. So basically, it was a really funny story. Um, a year ago when we were together in Ethiopia, um, we invited this man from Jinka, and it was like a special thing because he had to travel a really long way. And his Caius looked at me and said, let's sp let's split his travel 50 50. <laughs> and so uh, we we each paid a little bit for him to travel. And uh, he came and then returned home. And God is doing incredible things in that area. What was the remind everybody, his Caius, what was the religion of the people in Jinka? Most of them are what? You know, in very south of Ethiopia, the very, you know, people are African traditional religion. We call it African traditional. They just, you know, worship traditional God. It is not the true God, you know. The ancestral spirit and their forefathers' spirit, they say something like that. It is not Muslim-dominated area. Yeah. That is, uh, you know, that is my heart. We have to plant churches there and, you know, the church expansion and the lovership is going very fast there and the, that place is demon worshiping community in short we can conclude that demon worshiping co community yeah but now christ is there people are now because of lovership many people are coming to christ amen hallelujah and uh i think and you can tell me if i'm wrong his Caius, but Many times in places where there's ancestor worship, the good news of Jesus is very, very powerful because people who worship ancestors live in fear of the spirits, of their neighbors, of if their neighbors wanted to try to kill them using the spirits. And uh, when Jesus, when they hear about Jesus and the good news of Jesus, it really transforms their life. Is that correct? Yeah. And also, you know, they say when you sit with them, you know, make a relationship and ask them why you do this. Some of them are answering that your God is, your Jesus is in the third heaven, very far distance. Mm. So we need someone, you know, the spirit very close to us. And we are sharing with them, Christ is in our heart. Mm. So he, you know, they don't know Christ is in, with us in our heart, but they just think that Christ is in heaven. So we need some someone, the God, very close to us. That is their view. So we are helping people in that way, you know, to come to Christ, especially. Amen. <laughs> yeah, they're they're hearing that Jesus is not far off, but he's near. Uh, speaking <laughs> yeah. speaking of Christmas season coming up and Emmanuel, God with us. That's such a good message. Um, yeah, the good thing the good thing in our uh, especially. Our training, yeah, you delivered us in that last time, you know, especially Matthew 9, chapter 35 to 38, you know, one of the, you know, the three things what Jesus did was, you know, preaching, teaching and healing, you know, we are now the lovers, we are right where people before God, we can teach we can pray and also we can pray, you know, we can heal the sick people in our prayers. So in this point, I was challenging, I was challenging these ancestral people because they, when they get sick, they go to which doctors? When I say you, our, our friends who are, you know, lovership, they just pray for these people, God will heal them. Some of our lovership, Pride and you know many sick people also come to you know he get healed. Wow! That is the testimony. Many people from ancestral you know traditional people come to Christ. It is eyewitness. Many people get healed because our God Jesus he is with us. He is in us and he is working you know with our prayers so that they saw it 
and they come to Christ. Amen. Some of them even say, oh, your God is very close, even much closer than our God is. Some of them say like that. And you know, it is the true story, what we are looking here in Ethiopia, especially in Southern part. What an incredible testimony that they go from thinking that Jesus is a faraway God living in, you know, as you said, the third heaven. For those of you who don't know, uh, that's a reference to just the dwelling place of God. The first heaven being like, you know, the sky, the second heaven being like space, and then the third heaven yeah. being uh, where God is. Uh, but basically, uh, what a testimony that you're sharing that they go from thinking he's so far away to being like, your God is even closer than what we were believing before, which is incredible. So cool. <laughs> um, so uh, before, before I move on to my next question, is there any other testimonies that you would like to share? Hey, so I had to come in and edit this really quickly because we talked about a story that we decided might be a little bit not good for security reasons. Anyway, I just wanted to share a, the gist of what Hiskaius shared at this point in the podcast. Long story short, he was sharing with a group of people who are quite hostile to the gospel, and they decided to follow Jesus and have very quickly begun to spread it to others. In fact, um, one of these people has already preached it to 20, peop 20 people from this other religion, and another of these has already preached it to 50 people from this other religion. So just really quite incredible what God is up to. Now let's get back to the podcast. So God is, God is working mm. with lovership. Being the, the strategy is very simple, very easy. You know, they love God, they love others. So they come with a gospel message. And the relational way God is working with us. I'm mm. very happy on that. Hallelujah. Um, so at the beginning of our call, uh, you shared that things are out of control. Um, can you help people to understand what you mean by that? Like, would you be able to share some of the numbers that you were sharing with me before? Thank you. You know, in, in previous, in the beginning time, you know, when I say, when I get, when I hear report, 100 people, and 50 people, it was easy to uh, even uh, to recording. But really, last three, six months, the true, you know, report from the churches, you know, from the community where I'm addressing, when I trained, you know, they address it, they reached out 36,000, around 6,400 something people, they shared the good news and over 2000 2300 people come to christ that is the active report from on the ground that is even from this six months is from last september to coming february 2015 2025 i'm expecting to share over 50000 to share over 50000 and we are expecting to to spread the word with our lovership, over 50,000. And then we will see how many people will come to the road. That is our prayer. Because all people in their workplace, they're sharing. And it is beyond our control to record the reports. It is so many. That is why I'm saying beyond our control. You know, <laughs> each day we have reporters. We have reporters and they are doing good job. And it is many of them, they are not all of them, almost all of them, they are working their, their personal things and sharing the reporters, doing that work. Mm. That is very incredible in my life. Wow. Amazing. And uh, those, so there's 30, over 30,000 people have heard, have heard the gospel. Two, over 2,000 of them have believed the gospel. Um, what what are people doing after they believe? What happens next? You know, those old people are, you know, what we are doing is, especially we are working in the churches. Those churches are not as strong in evangelism. That, that's the reason for that church is they rely on only pastors and evangelists. But the pastors and the evangelists, they are not going out they are just serving people those who are coming in but now when we just evangelize in those communities when people come to christ 
we just sit with the uh, converted Christians and we ask them which church, evangelical churches, they can ever to, they like to join. So we just connect them with churches so that, you know, the pastors and evangelists, they were very happy. They just teach some basic teachings. We are supporting, you know, plant, those planted churches, they, they were empty, but now full of people. That is our, our help with leadership. So we connect them with churches. So the church is growing and the believers also maturing. That is our mission. Wow. Incredible, brother. So cool. Um, I'm, I'm amazed to hear everything that God is doing. And uh, so basically people decide to follow Jesus. They get connected with a local church in the local church. They're being trained to follow Jesus. And uh, are they also being like, what are they also being trained to be laborers at that point as well? That is even intentionally. I invite some pastors, some evangelists, because let them know the impact of membership. That was the, my my, you know, because we when we train only you know lovers and exclude pastors and evangelists, they don't know the impact of membership. So that is why I invited them. Some of them they take the training, then they support what we are doing, and they support in prayer. Sometimes even they just provide coffee and some snacks for training people. That's why when the new converts come to church, they will come and they just teach some basic teachings and give water baptism. Those kind of things, you know, those who get trained, the pastors, they participate and, as you know, they work with us also. Awesome. Wow. Praise God. So basically, because the, 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 the evangelists and pastors, the church leaders are also being trained, part of yeah. what they're doing in equipping and training the new converts is yeah. training them how to be laborers. Yes. Wow. Amazing. Brother, it's, it's so encouraging to hear these stories. And uh, the striking thing to me about all of it is that it's happening through ordinary people. Um, ordinary followers of Jesus for so long. We've, it's not just a Ethiopia thing. It's all over the world. We've thought to ourselves, Oh, only, you know, only highly gifted people, only, you know, pastors or evangel or, you know, gifted evangelists or whoever can actually share the gospel, but that's not true. Every single person can share the gospel before, before we, uh, finish up our recording here, brother. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with the people who are listening? Yeah, because, uh, you know, at this time, they don't want to listen from pastors. Mm. They don't want to listen from evangelists. They only want to listen from, you know, those who became Christian, you know, those who are converts. You know, they just, we just use them and we just, you know, train them to go into their community. And in that time, when the Muslim is come and they get training, the training is, you know, it is very difficult to just invite them in place. You know, it is good to bring them and, you know, sometimes uh, intentionally, I don't want to give them training in inside their city. Sometimes I invite some places and uh, bring them training. So training, if we have some training budget, we can go very, very farther, very farther in Ethiopia. So you may pray, God may provide us some training budget. And uh, another thing is, uh, especially, leadership is highly acceptable mission in Ethiopia. Because even in the big cities, you know, people, you know, in the workplace, they want to listen from their friends because Easily, they just see their lives. If you are a good person in your workplace, then you can influence your friends to bring them back to Christ. Mm. So it's good to make this training, and we can accomplish Great Commission very quickly. And as you know, that another thing is we are not, you know, must preach. You know, we are not preaching in big mega churches. It is one to one. So. One person, when you share good news to another person, he knows your life also. 
your life is light to him. So it is good to 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 just to help others as Christ's disciple. We are becoming not only lovership, but we are Christ's true disciples. So that you know the work is the influence is very high. Pray for Africa, especially in Ethiopia, so that we can we are doing this. We can we can address Great Commission very quickly. Thank you for friends who are praying for that. Yeah, and uh, the way that it's expanding so rapidly in just one year. I mean, from last year we had you know we did trainings maybe for three hundred people. Now a few thousand have heard about laborership, and thirty thousand have heard the gospel. That's just one year. Imagine where we'll be in another year. It'll be even more out of control, Lord willing, and uh, if he seeks to keep doing that. I wonder if it will even impact other countries in Africa. And so the idea that it could expand outside of Ethiopia even into other countries could be it could be profound. Like we could we could be seeing a whole new horn of Africa in the next, you know, two, three, four years. It could be it could be incredible. Yeah, thank God. Amen. Well, um, we'll be praying, brother, and uh, thank you so much for your faithful efforts there. Uh, God is doing amazing things, and uh, I hope you have a good day. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. God bless. Yeah, thank you, sir. And thank you all for joining this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. If you guys are interested in supporting Forge ambassadors like Hiscaius, uh, you can do so by going to the Forge website, forgeforward.org, clicking on Give Now in the upper right-hand corner. That will take you to a landing page that has four boxes on it, um, basically one that says Give Today to the Forge Fund, Give Monthly, uh, Support a Staff Member, and then there's a white box with a with a black circle in it that says Support a Ministry Initiative. If you click on Support a Ministry Initiative, uh, it will take you to a page where you can either give monthly or give one time, and you can su- choose from a whole list of Forge Ambassadors, including our Ambassadors General Fund, which goes to the one which has the most need. Um, and then if you would like to give to Hiscaius specifically, uh, you'll notice it says Ambassadors Ethiopia Hiscaius. So it's really quite, it's all right there. Um, and like Hiscaius said, If we have a bigger budget, we can train more people and advance the movement even faster than it's already moving. Uh, So if you have a heart for that, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can do so. um, You can give, or if you need more information, you can contact me at Nathan at ForgeForward.org. That's N-A-T-H-A-N at ForgeForward.org. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.